Okay, coming back now to the last part of chapter 14, The Missing Key. In our last chapter, our last part, Boone got shot with an arrow by a little bear. Let's see. Okay. For a couple of seconds, he remained upright in Patrick's breast pocket. Then, quite slowly, he fell forward. Omri had often marveled at the way people in films, particularly girls and women, were giving to let out, let out, letting out loud screams at dramatic or awful moments. Now he felt one rise in his own throat and would, it, and would have let it out if Little Bear had not cried out first. Patrick, who had not noticed anything amiss until now, looked at Little Bear, saw where his bow arm was still pointing, and looked down at his own pocket. Over the top of it, <clears throat> Boone hung, head down, as limp as a piece of knotted string. Boone! Boone! No! snapped Omri. Don't touch him! Ignoring Little Bear, who tumbled down his trouser leg to the floor as he moved, Omri very carefully lifted Boone clear between finger and thumb and laid him across the palm of his hand. The cowboy lay face up with the arrow still sticking out of his chest. Is he dead? whispered Patrick in horror. I don't know. Shouldn't we take the little bear, the arrow out? We can't. Little bear must. With infinite care and slowness, Omri laid his hand on the carpet. Boom lay perfectly still. With such a tiny body, it was impossible to be sure whether the arrow was stuck in where his heart was or a little higher up toward the shoulder. The arrow shaft was so fine, you could only make it up by the minute cluster of feathers. Little bear, come here. Omri's voice was steely, a voice Mr. Johnson might have envied. It commanded obedience. Little bear, scrambling to his feet after his fall, walked unsteadily to Omri's hand. Get up there and see if you've killed him. Without a word, Little Bear climbed onto the edge of Omri's hand and knelt down beside the prostrate Boone. He laid his hand up against, he laid his ear against the ch his chest just below the arrow. He listened, then straightened up, but without looking at either of the boys. Not killed, he said sullenly. Omri felt his breath go out in relief. Take the arrow out, carefully. If he dies now, it'll be double your fault. Little Bear put one hand on Boone's chest with his fingers on either side of the arrow, and with the other took hold of the shaft, shaft where it went into Boone's body. Blood come, need stop up hole. Omri's mother kept boxes of tissues in every room, mainly so nobody would have an excuse to sit sniffling. Patrick jumped up and brought this, tearing off a tiny corner and rolling it into a tiny wad no bigger than a pinhead. Now it's got germs on it from your hand, said Omri. Where's the disinfectant? In the bathroom cupboard. Don't let my mom see you. When Patrick was gone, Omri sat motionless and silent, his eyes fixed on Little Bear, still poised to pull out the arrow. After a long minute, the Indian muttered something. Omri bent his head low. What? Little bear, sorry. Omri straightened it up, his heart cold and untouched. You will be a lot sorrier if you don't save him, was all he said. <clears throat> Patrick raced back with the bottle of Listerine. He poured a drop into the lid and dipped the little ball of tissue into it. Then he held the cap close to little bear. Go on, said Omri. Pull it out. Little Bear seemed to brace himself. Then he began to tremble. Little Bear not do. Little Bear not doctor. Get doctor back. He no make wound good. We can't, said Omri. The magic's gone. You must do it again. Do it now. Now, Little Bear. Again, the Indian stiffened closing his hand tightly around the arrow. Slowly and steadily, he drew it out. 
and threw it aside. Then, as the blood welled out over Boone's checked shirt, Little Bear swiftly squeezed the liquid out of the ball of tissue and pressed it against the wound. Use your knife now. Cut the dirty shirt away. Without hesitating, Little Bear obeyed. Boone lay still. His face under its tan had turned ashy gray. We need a bandage, said Patrick. There's nothing we could use, and we can't move him to wrap it around him. We'll have to use a tiny bit of band-aid. Again, Patrick went to the bathroom. Again, Little Bear and, Va and Boone were left alone. Little Bear knelt now with his hands loose on his thighs. His head down, his shoulders rose and fell once. Was he sobbing with shame or fear? Or could it be sorrow? Patrick returned with a box of band-aids and a pair of nail scissors. He cut out a square big enough to cover the whole of Boone's chest, and Little Bear stuck it on with great care and even, on my thought, tenderness. Now, said Omri, take off your chief's cloak and cover him up warmly. This too, Little Bear did, uncomplainingly. We'll take him upstairs and put him to bed, said Omri. God, I wish we had that key and I could get the doctor back. As they walked slowly upstairs, he told Patrick about the first World War soldier he had brought to life to tend Little Bear's leg wound. We've got to find that key, said Patrick. We've just got to. Little Bear, still at Boone's side, on Omri's hand, said nothing. In Omri's room, Patrick made a bed for the cowboy from a folded handkerchief and another woolen cut square cut from Omri's sweater. Omri slipped a bit of thin, stiff card between Boone and his own hand, and on this he transferred the wounded man without too much disturbance, which might have started to bleed again. He is still unconscious. Little Bear silently stood by. Suddenly, he moved. Reaching up, he snatched off his chief's headdress, headdress and threw it violently onto the ground. Before Omri could stop him, he began jumping on it, and in a second or two, all the beautiful turkey tail feathers were bent and broken. Leaving it lying there, Little Bear took off across the carpet, running as hard as he could over the deep woolen tufts, stumbling sometimes, but running always in the direction of the seed box in his home. Patrick moved, but Omri said, said quietly, leave him alone. That's the end of chapter 14. Right now we are hitting our climax of the story. How do you think they're going to solve this problem? Keep in mind that sometimes in books, as in life, some problems can't be solved the way we want them to. That's our question for the end of this chapter. How are they going to solve this problem? What's the resolution going to be? As always, I love you guys and I miss you.